Hello, hello, Blartanian here with a TCC Challenge Extreme take on Desh's uh, Lost Chapter Lufania. That means no synergy, no burst, and in my case, uh, no creativity. I say that because I actually rather shamelessly stole this team from Dysopia Clay. Uh, I'll link his run in the video description. Um, I don't normally like just straight up copying other people's teams, but in this case, um, I was just kind of getting frustrated with this stage, not because you know, it's not beatable or anything, just because uh, the runs were taking a crazy amount of time to do. Like, I was taking like a half hour per run and then choking at the finish. And So I kind of said to myself, I don't really want to play this. I don't think I'm going to do a TCC challenge. Well, I already did the TCC challenge, but like uh, the extreme version this time around. Um, not for lack of difficulty, but for lack of just, it's like, I don't know if I have time for this. Um, then Clay posted his run a little bit earlier today uh, featuring this team here and I said that's an awesome team that looks like a lot of fun to use is that is that Eldnarsh actually like feeling fun and engaging to play sign me up and so uh, here we are um, this actually kind of highlighted for me something I misunderstood about Eldnarsh which is well he does cut your team's turn usage down a lot through his warp ability um, and he does technically deal damage um, it's treating him as a damage dealer isn't as effective as treating him as like a uh, as a disabler kind of yeah as, as a kind of a, a boss control mechanic so that you can have an actual damage dealer on the team. Again, this is something Clay pointed out. Like really, uh, speaking truthfully, you probably could just watch his run and get everything you'll get out of this run out of it, if not a bit more. Uh, <laughs> um, again, trying to kind of cover for my disingenuousness here using this team. Um, but now, hey, I can say I cleared the stage without using a burst, uh, even if it wasn't my own idea. Um, actually, last night we tried using Eldnarsh in, in several configurations, and uh, mostly with you know a couple two supports as his aid, and that was kind of a lot of the source of my frustration with this stage was that I wasn't doing enough damage, and the boss was dying, but it was taking forever. Um, so yeah, uh, brought in Terra, and that made all the difference. So thank you again to Clay for showing me how to do this. <laughs> So we started, we uh, we got lucky on our startup here in that they were both targeting Eldnar, so we were able to go straight into his um, terror stance and kind of basically lock them down from the get-go. The basic idea here is going to be to use terror to keep the bosses from doing anything for the first half of the fight or so, and then once Eldnar is completely spent, bring in Garland and do Garland terror stuff. Uh, something else I had kind of figured out about Plague Eldnarsh through um, trial, recent trial and error was that uh, I didn't realize that his HP plus attack doesn't charge his EX if you use it on a free turn. Which uh, explained a lot of why my, uh, my vortexes never seemed ready when I wanted them to be. Um, so this kind of altered play style with the uh, you know, damage dealer, you know, skill spam, all that stuff uh, went a long way into kind of helping make the uh, my usage of Eldnarch a lot more efficient. Yeah, uh, overall I'm glad that they've... Well, I'm glad they changed the TCC, the TCC challenge to make it so that it's no synergy and then if you want to go extreme you just don't use a burst. Um, kind of selfishly because that means I can more easily plan out my teams ahead of time and in the cases of bursts uh, I can save myself some time just adding the, you know, using the burst. Because sometimes you need the burst to actually clear the stage with the team. Other times you just need it to. Uh, other other times it's just a luxury that cuts down on the turn count, which is just nice for uh, for a mobile game where uh, where boss fights can take twenty to thirty minutes to complete, depending on your team setup. So that's appreciated. That was a sudden music change. Wow. Um, Yeah, so we uh, we are now out of LDs. We've been pretty aggressive with our skills here. Um, you know, kind of realizing I'd kind of mistimed when Terror was going to be up there. So we're pr we're thinking of bringing Eldarsh in, or Garland in somewhere around like the. Um, 
before the 50% mark, certainly, so that we could kind of get things set up before the big cleanse happens. Um, my general idea is basically once I'm out of, you know, terror usage, that's when it's going to happen. Uh, brought Garland in probably later than I needed to there. Um, I wanted to bring him in after, sometime after 80% to kind of amp our damage after they've increased their defenses, but uh, kind of forgot to right after 80%, so we'll be spending a few turns... Whoop. We probably lost a few turns of, of his debuff's effectiveness there because he'll be cleansing it off. So here, once again, keep being mindful that the HP plus attack won't charge the skills. Uh, and also a little bit nervous of the orb in that case. I wanted some splash damage to, because the you know the bees orb was getting a little bit lower than I was comfortable with. But as a, as a player who tends to um, be very conservative with the skill usage and kind of try to stretch stuff out as long as I can before having to kind of pull triggers on stuff, uh, it was kind of an adjustment for me mentally to be like, okay, so with Eldenarch, it's okay to just punch him, and just hit him, and like just throw, sh throw shit at him and you know, spam all the skills, and it's okay if I'm drained dry before they've hit 50%, because, you know, once they go under there, we don't really plan on Eldenarch coming back. Um, that was part of why I used a squall call earlier. Is uh, I want I figured it's be best to boost the orb up a bit and uh, get the damage out now rather than wait until the end of the fight if Eldnarsh as like kind of a backup for if Eldnarsh comes back in later. It's kind of funny uh, in terms of like editing videos with Eldnarsh. I. Uh, I think Eldenarch was one of the first videos that I doubled the speed for the last time I used him. I think, I hope. Um, I started doing the double speed just because I figure, you know, folks don't really... I, I imagine most folks don't have time to watch a bunch of 20 minute long, you know, DFFO runs. So I figured, okay, well, I'll cut it down to 10 minutes. That'll make it a bit more digestible. The, uh, the downside of this is that um, stuff happens so fast that I... Uh, if I get on a little tangent, I can completely forget where I'm at. Uh, right there, I distinctly remember being nervous about the break order and wanting to try to not mess it up too much. That's why HP attacked with Terra, which is kind of a rarity. There goes my Wi-Fi, apparently. So, at this point, um, ideally we're not going to let the bosses take another turn. We actually are quite protected if they do, because between we're going to be dropping Ramu's Paralyze, followed by Kryal's Trap. Um, the main reason we don't want the Macne at this point is just so that uh, Garland's Burst keeps its stacks. Uh, Gabranth betrayed me there with the, uh, the Break Order. That was kind of annoying. I was hoping it would push them both behind Terra. Sometimes uh, the Break Order can get really kind of touchy in terms of that, when you use an AoE move, and you think that it'll hit them both for the same amount, but for some reason one's just above the threshold and the other isn't, so that one of the hits breaks them and the other doesn't get broken, they switch. Bit of a pain, but nothing we can't deal with. So, we got Jack here, we got a Gabronth call, we got the, uh, got the four debuffs, basically we're, uh, we're ready to roll. So with that, so, uh, <laughs> You see there, the boss turns do weird things, I've noticed when we enter summon. There, I had, I had gone through all this effort to kind of break them in a certain order, and now they, uh... Well, again, it, uh, this is me kind of complaining about nothing, but, um, I... Uh, it was kind of a hassle, because I remember trying to arrange the, you know, arrange the break order so that I could... So that, you know, any rebreaks that happened would be favorable, and it, uh, didn't work out for some reason. Now, B's going to be coming out of break before A, and... I don't know how this happened, but this is why with Kryal I end up spamming a few skills there, and uh, much to my chagrin, the same thing happens where the uh, the AoE attack breaks them in rever reverse order for some reason. I, I don't really understand how that works. I, I think just one, the hits are just small enough that they inch B over the break, you know, they break B slightly before A, and it just can't be helped. Anyway, um, we've gotten to the point now where Terra can just kind of turn this into a game of numbers. 
a question of does she have enough skill, you know, LD and free turn, free skill stuff to kill them before they get to go again. As you can imagine, um, the answer is going to be yes. I'm not going to hold you in suspense too long there, but the one thing I am trying to be mindful of is uh, her EX buff, uh, Esper Blood, because the LD extends her buffs by two turns, but gives her four free turns, or five free turns, how many free turns is that? She and Kryl are kind of hard to teleport apart sometimes. Uh, so she gets four free turns out of that, and that means that her Esper Blood buff is going to be falling off. And so, even though she gets a free skill, I am going to choose to use her EX here. And again, if I really wanted to milk it, I could let Garland take another turn and have him do his big attack, cry out to a thunder or something. Um, but I was trying to see how low I could get the turn count. Um... In my head, I was thinking, okay, I'm shamelessly ripping off Clay. If I can get, like, if I could beat him on turns, at least I'll feel better knowing, like, well, at least I kind of, I did something that makes it worth sharing with people. Um, this is also part of the reason why uh, I was hoping to kind of, uh, that Eldarsh would be back in time to include him in the video thumbnail. Um, you know, you like that with the team complete uh, green. Uh, we're getting pretty darn close. Just a few turns to go. It looks like... I don't think we're quite going to be able to... kill them before... Well, gonna battery up. Thunder. And have Garnet... Or Garland. I keep saying Garnet. Hit him with that big last shot isn't quite enough, and I debated here, I was like, I could stall out for Eldnarsh, but 46 turns on the dot. I, you know, if nothing else, I at least, <laughs> I at least pulled it off, uh, pu pulled off Clay's attempt in a way that didn't make me look sh you know, shameful. Well, more than just being a copycat, but uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the run. Uh, again, massive shoutouts to Clay for giving me something I could use here, um, without hating myself while I did it. And I'll see you in the next one. Adios.